is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Lions. The Indians continue to roll on at home, winning their ninth straight game thanks to more late inning lightning. A resurgent bullpen has also spurred the tribe to a one game lead in the AL Central. Starting pitching has been a central storyline, and Corey Kluber will attempt to pitch the Indians to a 10th straight win at home next on Sports Time Ohio. Another gorgeous day in downtown Cleveland as the Indians continue a tremendous homestand tonight. It's game two of this three game series between the Indians and the Tampa Bay Rays. Hi again everyone Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning nine is a familiar number right now for the Indians. They're nine games over 500 the most games they've been over 500 since back in 2013 when they ended that season with a tremendous run to get into the postseason. And they've won nine straight games here at home, and they're doing it a myriad of different ways. But, Rick, the late inning come from behind victories. Terry Francona says, you know what, we're not amazed anymore because they keep doing it. Yeah, they're starting to get that feeling. Anytime the game goes uh, late into the ball game, tie game, they seem to find a way to win it. They did last night. Lindor hits a first pitch home run, and then it's followed by Uribe hitting a two-run home run. They added three in the eighth inning, and in their nine-game winning streak, five wins in their last at-bat. you got to love outscoring the opponents 56 to 20. The starters have been great. The bullpen is really kicking it back into gear. It's been a lot of fun to watch him play in this ballpark. Corey Kluber, every once in a while, he starts showing signs that he's going to get back to that Cy Young form, and every time he gets close, he gets maybe knocked back a peg or two. Kansas City knocked him around pretty good his last time out. But do you see signs that he's about to maybe get on a roll? Yeah, there's no reason why he can't. His stuff is good enough, it seems like, every time he goes out. He may have to pitch inside a little bit more to certain hitters, and he has to pick up his defense every once in a while. He made a mistake, and he gave up a big home run in his last start. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I think Corey Kluber, anytime he goes out there, he's got a great chance. So we're expecting him to continue that streak here, 6-7 and seven on the year, fifth in the strikeouts in the American League. He's going to be matched up against a left-hander, Blake Snell, only making his third start. So we'll see if the Indians can come out and maybe get him an early lead tonight. That's our quick and loans, rocket arms, as you look at the matchup here tonight. When we come back, we'll have the first pitch. Boss, we'll check in with Andre Knott, who has more on Juan Uribe, who keeps getting big hits for the Indians. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by your local Toyota dealers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places.
Two out RBI single. He's out of room. It's out of here. Way out of here, in fact. Bare hand grab and throw, and he got him. Gone to Souvenir City. What a rebate with a blast to center field. The Indians win again. They've won nine in a row at home. Another beautiful night here at the ballpark. Indians and the Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa's lost five in a row. The ball six games below 500. The Indians have won four straight and are a season best nine games over 500. Let's go down now to uh, Andre Knott. Juan Uribe is on fire. Homering in three straight games for the first time in his career. It's been one guy that's gotten hot and for the last weekend basically it's been Juan Uribe he was injured back on June 12th in Anaheim missed five games after that prior to that he was one for his last 24 since that injury and coming back he's hitting six for 13 with five runs the three home runs you brought up in the six RBI and a double he says when he sat out for that week after the injury he realized he was over anxious at the plate that he was attacking the ball and not letting the ball get into the zone. He says having a couple days off helped him because he realizes where he can help this team. The other thing he asked for, and, and Art Show like this, he told Tito Francona, can I get every five days off now? <laughs> I play a lot better when I get four days in between. Hey, at 37, 38 years old, absolutely right, man. You give him a couple extra days off, he can afford it. Our great clip of the game from last night, Juan Arebe going deep. and seven on the year trying to get back to that 500 mark well I'm trying to rebound from his last start one of the worst ones that uh, Corey has had allowing nine hits and eight runs against the Kansas City Royals and this has not been a friendly park for him this year just two and four with a 450 ERA Indians take the field behind Kluber. And we'll take a look at the starting lineup for Kevin Cash and the Tampa Bay Rays. Logan Forsyth will lead it off. Brad Miller batting second. Evan Longoria will hit third. Then it's Logan Morrison, Desmond Jennings, and Corey Dickerson. Taylor Motter gets to start in left field. Jeff Decker just called up from the minors. Will bat eight and Hank Hunger hitting ninth. Well, and tonight's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher, Corey Kluber, 6 at 7 with a 423 earned run average this year. Kluber making his 15th start and trying to turn it around in this start. In his career, he is 2 and 2 against uh, the Rays in six starts, so this will be start number seven. And he has 10 walks, 49 strikeouts against the Rays in his career. So, you know, maybe they can get him some runs early. He gave up uh, some early first inning runs in his last start. Hopefully he can have a one, two, three inning, and let's see what the offense can do. But let's set the Indians defense, which is brought to you by Jeep behind Kluber this evening. It looks like this. It'll be Ramirez in left field. Naquin is in center. Chisholm all over and right. Uribe at third. Lindor at short. Kipnis is at second. Napoli at first. And Gomes doing the catching. Lance Barksdale has to play. Ted Barrett, the crew chief, is at first base. Gabe Morales at second. Angel Hernandez down at third. Ready to go. <laughs> Terry Francona has his club in first place by one game over Kansas City in the AL Central. Everybody in the division won last night everybody in the east lost last night yeah Kansas City they uh, they're in New York playing the Mets that short two game series they were off but Kluber's first pitch is up high, ball one. 
80 degrees our game time temperature under clear skies warm once again in downtown Cleveland swing and a miss evens the count. And in two balls and a strike. Logan Forsyth was one for four last night. Forsyth out looking, one down. Came right back with a good four seam fastball, gets the call strikeout. Look at it on the Nissan pitch tracker. That's it's right there, man. I don't know what he was ducking. It was a good pitch with two strikes. Tough one to take. Kluber gets strikeout number one. Corey's been a different guy because in his uh, in his six wins, his ERA comes out to 117. In his seven losses, he's been beat up with an ERA of over seven. Little tapper. Kluber grabs it barehanded and throws him out. Happily had to reach back inside the baseline. And you got to make the catch and get the hand out of the way quickly. Well, with that guy going down the line, I think Kluber threw it a little sidearm, so it was a tough, tough look for him. Each to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Limit Longo, Evan Longoria has gone four for 15 against the Indians this year. Two of his four hits have been home runs. Solid D behind Kluber. He has allowed five unearned runs on well, the year. That's an adjusted yes. number that we found out about just before the game. The Indians appeal to play. It was the Ramirez play. In Kansas City in which there was a Base hit given to Hosmer on a ball that Jose Ramirez misplayed at third. Nice play by Napoli, inning over. End result is three earned runs come off of Corey Kluber's stat sheet for the year. The Rays go one, two, three. The Indians are coming to bat. Terry Francona starting nine is brought to you by Progressive. Carlos Santana in the leadoff spot tonight with Rajay Davis getting a night off. Jason Kipnis will bat second. Francisco Lindor third. Mike Napoli, Jose Ramirez, and Juan Uribe in the middle. Lonnie Chisholm, all Jan Gomes, and Tyler Naquin will round it out. And our uh, Hyundai starting pitcher for the night is going to be 
Blake Snell only making his third start. His last start was against the uh, Seattle Mariners where he went three and a third innings, gave up eight hits, five runs. Only one of them earned. He had three strikeouts, three walks. So the young leftist is his second start on the road. And a first pitch strike to Carlos Santana. Santana two for four with a home run last night. A little bit high with that fastball. The breakdown on him and, and he has two starts. The first one was back in April. Right handers to this point eight for twenty one which equates to a three eighty one and lefty's just two for fifteen. So usually their M.O. as an offense when they never faced a guy before that first time through you pretty much try and work him into the count to see what he has to offer. Missed inside it's three and one. And that's what you want to make him do throw strikes first. Santana on a 3 1 pitch. It's a routine fly ball to left field. One down. Let's check uh, the defense for the Rays tonight behind Snell. Looks like this. Motters in left field. Jennings is in center. Decker over in right. Longoria at third. Miller at short. Forsythe at uh, second. Morrison is at first. Conger doing the catching. Up Jason Kipnis. Kipnis last night was one for four with a run batted in. Snow has a, a bit of an awkward delivery, or unorthodox, maybe is a better way to. Describe it. He kind of stands straight up and down and then recoils a bit as he delivers. Oh, big curveball. But that's out of the strike zone. It's two and one. Fastball threw it by him at 95. Yeah, he got a good uh, fastball. Looks like he comes pretty much straight over the top, though, as a left-hander. He shouldn't be tough to pick up. But he has pretty good velocity. Foul back out of play. Missed there and a full count. Into the glove for a strikeout. Got a piece of it, but Hank Conger hangs on. Before the ball game, Sandy Alomar mic'd up when they exchanged the lineup cards. What's it going to be like tomorrow? Tomorrow? That's a good question for you. I know. I understand. How you, are you guys going to walk here or are they going to score you guys here? I'm planning on walking. I can bike here. It's not a big deal. It's only 18 miles. Yeah, you can bike 50 miles, right? <laughs> it's going to be an interesting day at the ballpark tomorrow. With the Cavaliers victory parade scheduled for 11 a.m. 
Supposed to wrap up around one, but then they'll have probably uh, an event down there when the parade finishes. So downtown expecting 800,000 to Whoa. a million people. So if you're making plans to come down here to the ballpark, leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Things should be finished up by then, and I would imagine they'll be nor somewhat normal conditions by the time fans head down to the game tomorrow night. Let's hope so. Now the two one and a little bit low three balls and a strike. Yeah this guy looks he looks like he has a very good arm consistency can he repeat that delivery is look like the one that got away and up under Lindor's chin maybe tried to overthrow it a little bit. So you may be getting some good counts to hit in today from this guy if you're patient. Yeah. Ah. Full count on a fastball that nicked the corner. That's pretty generous. That's why you see the catcher, uh, Conger, he's sitting right down the middle. And Lindor lines it into the glove of Morrison to end the inning. Tribe goes one, two, three. We're scoreless after one. At Bad App, you can stay connected all season with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Logan Morrison leading off here in the second for Tampa. Foul right back. Back again. No balls and two strikes. It's a Tampa club that has really changed its offensive approach from the days of the Joe Madden era. 
Not that that was so much of maybe a Joe Madden influence, but maybe more organizationally they've, yeah. they've sort of changed their offensive philosophy. I would agree with that. Their team that used to work the count, it was kind of an organizational thing. I mean, you didn't swing at the first pitch. Sometimes you didn't swing at the second pitch. And now they're an organization that preaches, let's be aggressive, let's get after it. It's led to a, more home runs. They have hit 100 already this year. But it can also lead to some quick outs. Well, that, that's okay. If your hitters are disciplined enough to get after that one pitch you're looking for, if it's a fastball and you jump it early, that may be the best pitch you get in that bat. I'm not saying you have to do that every time up. And I think a lot of hitters are starting to do that more so than try and work to five or six pitches. Not every hitter can hit the ball like that. The 2 2. Did he go? He went. Jones will have to throw to first. And it hit the runner. And so Morrison is safe at first. Well, he didn't really have a, a line of sight there. By the time he got to the ball, it looked like Morrison was in his way. And he was he was legitimate. He was going inside the box. Going down the line. It gets under the glove. A little backhand there. And it's by the time he gets it, look at he's he's by all rights in the box. It's right in the butt. Well, that's a play that they worked on in spring training, inside or outside. You right. Know, as far as the first baseman, right. well, with the ball that far back, he's got to go inside. Yep. And Combs just kind of misfired with the throw. That's ruled a strikeout and a passed ball. Yeah, it didn't hit dirt. He went with a backhand, and it looked a little nonchalant. Let it go. Jennings' bunt attempt is foul. Desmond Jennings had a good day at the plate yesterday, going two for three with a triple and a run score. And they missed inside, one on one. That's one thing for Corey Kluber's pitching inside. If he can go in there, and not just one time to go in there, but pitch in there, boy, he would be so much more effective with the breaking stuff he uses to the right handers away. Good block by Gomes this time. Right now, Kluber going to be looking for a ground ball double play, and I know. Tampa has grounded into the fewest. They have grounded into 28. Two last night, Tomlin was able to get a couple of ground balls at the right time. Off the end of the bat foul. Yeah, we mentioned it last night. I think that stats. Somewhat misleading the fact that they've hit into the fewest double plays doesn't mean that they can't or don't. It's just that they don't have a lot of base runners. Well, and their swing and miss rate is the highest in the league. We 28 and a half percent. So a lot of uh, things factor into that. Low and the throw is in Got time. It. Got it. Morrison as he raced. Well, he had an opportunity to pick himself up, and he did. He let the ball get past him. He reached first base, but he throws him out at second. So, okay, you're even. He was off and running. He took it. And there's the tag. Yeah, it wasn't really a good pitch for Jennings. Well, not with two strikes. Yeah, he, I mean, if he swings at that, it would have been a strike him out, throw him out. Go please. He had another opportunity. Now the 3 2. Swung out and missed. He strikes him out. Two down. It's our uh, third strikeout today. That'll be our circle K. A little cutter away off the dish. 
See, that's where his breaking stuff is so good to the righties. If he even gets them looking at any place on the inside part and, you know, commands that 17 inches of home plate, be awfully tough. Fastball misses, ball one. Corey Dickerson was in left field last night. He's DHing this evening. Tampa Bay had to put a couple of players on the DL after last night's game. Mike Matuk, who was hit by a pitch, fractured his left hand. And Steve Pierce, uh, Pierce who we saw going, he went down was, coming around first base, blew a hamstring Both out. those things, Matt, it was the strangest. Matuk, he didn't move at home plate. He stayed right there, didn't move his hands at all, and he got hit. Normally, when you see a ball coming at you, you get out of the way. And for Pierce, it was just a routine fly ball. He was rounding first base and went down. Base hit in the right field for Corey Dickerson. So that'll keep the inning going for Tampa. The injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Mikey Matuk, he got hit by a pitch. And Steve Pierce, is, he, was, he wasn't even gone. He didn't even get to first base, and the hamstring was gone. There's the Matuk. Yeah, there it is. You see, he, he just went right back into it. Normally, you get out of the way. And watch this. There it down goes Pierce. He wasn't even. No. Not he, like he was. No. He wasn't hard. Sprint. No. I don't know what it was. It, you know, that, that's a strange thing because they can, you know, pop or do something just like that. You don't have to be running full speed for it to happen. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to happen. I don't know if it was tired, it was stretched, but it was in inevitable. Yeah. It was going to happen. If it didn't happen there, maybe if he, he went hard, who knows? Normally, when you see a guy blow a hamstring, it's, he's flying down that line, and it, you, know, you see him, uh-oh. Just don't normally see it happen to the guy just kind of in a trot or a jog. But it happened. Well, yeah, not with these guys. They're on the field every day. They're working out. They're stretching. They do stuff every single day from February. And plus in the offseason. Ball right at Lindor. He'll flip it to Kipnis and that'll end the inning. No runs ahead, a man left, middle of the second. No score here in Cleveland.
the new drink rails in left. The district ticket presented by Sports Time Ohio. District tickets only $13, and that includes your first drink. And they are available online at Indians.com. Mike Napoli leads off here in the second inning and takes a strike. Up high, one on one. Is there a little bit of a sense for hitters that are facing a guy for the very first time you've never seen him there's really not a lot of tape on him to want to see something first like first hand in the box you want to see a pitcher too yeah you may look for your one pitch you're going to ask the first right hander that comes back how's he throwing does his ball do anything you're just going to look in your zone maybe for that first fastball and get after if you want. But yeah you would like to see four five six pitches at first at bat it should help you uh, you know along the way or at least your next at bat and it'll help the guys that are following you. I mean they look at this team last night what they did the first time through they you know nothing whatsoever. Boy but they teed off the second time yeah. the second time third time through they they got after it and they got busy. And I realize everybody is different. Uh, Francisco Lindor says I, I don't like to look at a lot of tape of the, the pitcher. I want to get in there. I want to see firsthand, see what he's got, and then go from there. Some guys like to see what he has on videotape, what he features, what he throws in certain counts, maybe. Yeah, and, and that's that's what you, when he when he's talking about that, he means you have to get in that batter's box to see it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You can watch all you want. You can sit in the on deck circle and watch him. You can watch all the video you want until you walk in the batter's box, and you're really not going to get a feel for it. The three two. Well that's similar to what we talked about with Drew Smiley last night. You can watch video but until you get in the box and see that that yeah. fastball while it may be 90 91 it gets on you a little quicker than quicker that. than you would think. Absolutely. Because guys want to know the speed so they're going to say what's he throwing. Not every 91 is the same. Andre. Francisco Lindor now talk about someone like Lindor he doesn't like watching film on who they're going against that night. But he talked about swinging the bat right handed. He tries to find guys that swing like him and he'll watch film of their swings but he doesn't try to get into what pitchers are doing. He just reads what they tell him. That's how he likes to go about preparing for guys. Blake Snell ball one to Jose Ramirez after walking Napoli. Yeah mechanically when you watch this guy throw and look at granted it's only the second inning. I can see where he can throw a lot of pitches or you know be all over the strike zone. And maybe sometimes effectively wild. There's a big curveball in for a strike. We'll see if uh, what his go to pitch is. You know, can he throw that consistently or in a spot when he gets to two strikes? When he's behind in the count, not necessarily ahead. Off the end of the bat, toward right, Decker makes the catch. One away. Our player profile brought to you by Levin Furniture. Blake Snell is a Seattle native. He uh, was all set to become a Washington Husky. And the Rays made him a supplemental first round pick. He's a young man who, when he was in high school, wasn't taking things as seriously as his mom wanted him to, so she yanked him out of school. And homeschooled him for a year. He said, I didn't think she was serious, but she said, Oh, yeah, I'm all kind of serious. The crazy thing about Shet Snell is he looks to second, makes the throw there, they get the out back to first, not in time. He grew a ton between his sophomore and junior year in high school. He was. 
was the note I had it here. He was like five foot six, I think, five foot seven, through to six three. He was five foot six at the end of his sophomore year and was six three at the start of his junior year. Oh, man. Like he was working in a circus, come walking in on stilts. <laughs> Throw all your clothes out. We're going to have to buy all new stuff yeah. over the summer. Two down for Lonnie Chisenhall. But Snell, you can see right there, he's got a very good fastball. And for him, he admittedly said, look, I, I've just always kind of overpowered people and now I have to learn how to pitch. Yeah you'll learn that in a hurry if you want to you know crawl up the ladder down in the minor leagues because the, the competition gets much better the game speeds up a lot more and as you move up it gets tougher and tougher. He glides through the second inning no score in Cleveland through two. Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Third inning and for the Rays. Bottom part of the order. Jeff Decker will lead it off. And when you see the spelling of his first name. Understand it is not a typo. It was a typo on his uncle's birth certificate. And that's what led to the unusual spelling of his first name. But his uncle, his uncle never changed it. He left, he stayed with it, lived with it. And the name was passed down to Jeff in the in the honor of his late uncle who passed away while serving in the United States Armed Forces. Decker's played sparingly over parts of three seasons previously with the Padres and Pirates. Pressed into service now though with the injuries last night and you know it, it makes you wonder if if Tampa Bay would be willing to consider a reunion of sorts with Carl Crawford who was released recently by the Dodgers. I mean could it really hurt if he's 
I mean, the Dodgers are on the hook for the money. It wouldn't really cost uh, them a no, whole lot. No, minimum, you know, for the, the rest of the way is what it would cost them. But, you know, he was hitting 185. He's been on the DL seven times in the five yeah, years he's left uh, since he played last with Tampa, and he's going to be playing on turf a lot. Yeah, probably a totally different player than what left. But given the injuries that continue to mount, it, it might not be well, a bad right. idea. Desperate situations. You know, the Rays were 9-2 and two over their last 11 games before they hit this five-game skid here. Well, during that time, Rick, Kevin Cash said he felt really good about where the team was at mentally. He said, look, we believe in these guys. I think they believe in themselves. And, uh, and that's the thing about baseball, though. Things can be going along really well, and everybody can be all rowing in the same direction. And, but what happens when you hit those skids? Can you can you stop the losing streaks before they spiral out of control? That's where the, the personalities come in in the clubhouse. That you know the, the the veterans, the Longoria's there, that have to step up and really you know that's where you end things like that. And I mean they're a pitching uh, oriented team. They're going to have to do it with their starting pitching and their bullpen has struggled a little bit lately. And also they have their injuries. And their their way of scoring has been the long ball. They're the worst at hitting with runners in scoring position. Longoria had a hit last night. They were over 21. Remember in the first after the error, they're one for their last 24. And 227 on the season in that situation. So that's a tough way to go. 47% of their runs have come with two outs. Yeah. The toughest way to score. And better than 50% on the home run ball. Well, that's not a guy you want to walk. Hank Conger gets a free pass on four pitches. Batting just 212 on the air. Top of the order, Logan Forsyth. But you brought up a, a, a more important element with regards to teams that are struggling and look the Indians have been there we've watched them on the field we watched them up close behind the scenes how they get through it it's easy and I've, I've heard many a coach say this when I was growing up heard a lot of coaches throughout my career covering teams that have reiterated this point it's easy to be a leader when things are going well when you're winning but yeah. where are you when things are going bad what yeah. kind of a player no. what you know Sandy Alomar used to tell me say look it's real easy to be a leader when you're the 95 Indians yeah you know it's tough when things aren't going well you know in 91 when they were getting their faces kicked in every night 92 oh, yeah. 105 losses yeah, yeah. It's right. a little, little, little diff more difficult to find leaders in, 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 especially in baseball because nobody's immune to it no, you, you're going to go everybody. through an offer, and, and that's when guys look, well, how are you acting well, when you're, you're having those tough times? Well, everybody goes through their, their tough times as individuals, but when the team starts going in tough times, it's the individuals that have to step up, and that's where you see who's man on a ball club, you know, who the men are. And you see the guys that want to run and hide. And, oh, boy, this little injury is bothering me. I can't play today through the, the tough times. That's where you have to step up, and you see where your players are. The thing about baseball, and it makes it tougher now, is that guys don't stay in the same place long enough. You know what I mean? You yeah. may you may have what we call now our core players. You know that you're you're counting on, day, but it's the other guys. The, the, the guys, okay, we need a utility man, we need an extra outfielder, we need another guy that well, we're not going to pay a lot of money to, but we need them. You know, it's those kind of guys. What's their personality like? Yeah. Do they fit? Do they fit into what we're trying to do here? That's the tough question. And you don't always know that until they're thrown into the mix. <laughs> until, until you see them. I mean, That's you right. can hear it. You can get all the great, oh, this guy's a terrific guy. He's, he's fantastic. Then you get him you into know. your clubhouse, and, boy, oh, he's not the guy we heard about. No. Or, you know, you get out there, and that's why people ask, what do you think of this guy? Well, this guy's pretty good, but I don't get to see him play every day. I can make a judgment when I watch a guy play every day and I know and he plays for the Indians and we watch every game. You know, when, when guys have 
good series against us, and the only time that's when we see him. Boy, this is a great player. We got to get him. Go get him and bring him over and see what he's like. I mean, we've yeah. seen it a number of times. Sure. Until you see a guy play every day, it's tough to make a judgment on him. That's what, that's, that's what scouts do. I mean, that's what's so tough about their job. Logan Forsyth facing a 1 2 pitch. Another one in the dirt, and he's had a bunch of those bouncing out in front of the yeah, plate. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been busy tonight. Six of them. You know, that's a. The thing about scouts is, you, you know, you might go in when a guy's just hotter than a pistol and write a glowing report. But no scout makes a recommendation based on that one series. He will have to double back and see him again and maybe a third time. Right. And you just hope you get a some more uh, a more balance by seeing him a number of times. But as you said, unless you see him every day for a good chunk of the season, you're still making a best estimated guess. Sure. And I mean, that's why they send two, three, four, five guys to go see people sometimes and what you have to do. And, and those scouts have to trust people. You know, find a guy that you know that you can trust. And you ask him, what, what's this guy like? What does he mean to this team? How is he with the other players? Swing and a miss. Foresight down on strikes. That's four Ks for Corey Kluber. He just fired this one right by. Well, him. he did that back in the in the first inning, and he took it. This time he swung at it and couldn't catch up to it. He elevated it maybe a little bit more, and he gets him to swing and miss. So he's 0 for 2 tonight with two punches. I think it's going to be interesting. I mean, we're about a month away from the trading deadline, about five weeks to be exact. But you know, what will the Indians' role be? And you would expect, based on where they are right now. That they'll be trying to add a piece if that's the case. The thing you always wonder about is will that piece come in? Will he fit in? Will he be a productive piece? Sometimes teams go out and, and make those deadline deals and they, they don't work at all. Miller sends a drive to left, but it's high in the air for Ramirez. And he makes the catch. The inning is over. Middle of the third. No score. Third, Jan Gomes going to lead it off for Cleveland, the number eight hitter in the lineup. Then Tyler Naquin and Carlos Santana do up third. Gomes two for four with a double and two runs scored last night.
Blake Snell's pitch misses inside for ball one. Broken bat, base hit, right field. And Jan Gomes says, I'll take it any way I can get it. Absolutely. First hit for the Indians tonight. Lead off single. Lead off man aboard, Sandy Alomar Jr. will get in Gomes' ear, and we'll listen in to what Sandy's been talking about throughout the game tonight. Congratulations. Everything good? The bunch is mine. Thank you. Hey, buddy. How you doing? That's <laughs> Arby. There you go. Sarball. Vamonos. Oh, yeah, he gone. <laughs> I do think he's trying to be an announcer out there. Well, he did spend some time in Chicago. That's right. He, he did. Know, and he knows it. I mean, he jokes with us all the time about stuff. Oh, yeah. So he has a good time. He enjoys it. He's a hard worker as well. Make one with a hard bunt toward first, but the only play there is for Morrison. Well, that bunt was on his own. It'll go as a sacrifice, and Gomes is in the scoring position. Stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Among qualifying players, look at this list of guys who have walked more times than they have struck out. Okay, Rizzo and Santana right at the same level. Ben Zobris. El Tuve, well, he hits everything in sight. And Harper. And now Santana. With a runner in scoring position. In the dirt, nicely blocked by Hank Conger. Another thing to remember, too, when you get some speed on the base, the guy behind the plate, you just said Conger, you can certainly run on him. I mean, he's thrown out 15% of the base runners, and that's up from what he did last year. But you have to have the right guys on the base. Right back to him. Snell looks the runner back and throws out Santana. Two down. All right, now pay attention to celebrate the Cleveland Cavaliers NBA championship and the team's parade tomorrow. The Indians are going to go all in 216 with a $16 ticket offer for the finale against the Rays tomorrow. Ball game starts at 710. All upper, de uh, upper deck tickets will be $16 when purchased at Indians.com or the ticket office right here at the ballpark. So not a bad deal. You're going to be down here, stick around. Come see a ball game, and then we go out on the road for 10, so we won't be around. Come check it out. Have a chance. We'll see what happens tonight. Having an undefeated homestand if we can win tonight. Tribe trying to maintain their stranglehold on the top spot in the AL Central. Right now, Jason Kipnis is trying to give him the lead. That's up high, one on one. Kip had a two out base hit off the left hander between short and third yesterday. Gomes just got to concentrate on getting a good secondary lead. As Miller goes back there, keep getting off more and more. Out of play on the left side. You know, the reason the Indians are nine games over 500 and sitting on top of the standings is that when you look at what they've done through 69 games this year compared to a year ago yeah it's pretty stark they the pitching's it. been good it was good last year still good this year they've scored 50 more runs last year at this time they hit 57 homers they've hit 83 this year a little bit of offense goes a long way doesn't sure it does 
There and you there's go. A line drive, base hit, center field. Goes coming around third, he'll score. Ball goes all the way to the wall. Kipnis can run all day. He's in the second easily. He's going to come around third with a full hit of speed. Him. Here he comes. He will score. Well, that's fun. He hung him a breaking ball. Kipnis took advantage of it and gets the base hit. Jennings ends up missing the ball. He wanted to try and throw him out, so it'll be a single. And I'm sure an error. Let's check it out on our AT&T high speed replay. He knew he made a mistake with the breaker ball. He slapped his glove. In comes Jennings. Wanted to make a throw. Didn't catch the ball. It gets behind him. And Kipnis will circle the bases. Single RBI and a big error. So the Indians are on the board with two outs. Glenn Norris one to right. Decker makes the catch. Ah, give the guy an inside the park home run. He's got to run all that way. Not a little late. Two nothing, Cleveland after three. Jennings and he ran it all the way around. I say it's an inside the park home run. Well, you're a youth official score. <laughs> you can put it on your card that way. You can That's put fine. it on the card. Yes. <laughs> Here's Evan Longoria grounded out his only time up. Seriously though, I, I was I didn't get a good look at the replay. I was trying to see if Jennings actually ever got leather on that ball or if it just took a crazy skip. He was coming in to happened. try and throw him out. It had to go off his glove. You don't see bad hops usually in the outfield. Not since your era. No, they used to say there's never a bad hop in the air. No. <laughs> On the ground, yes. Kia in the driver's seat shows you that uh, Longoria's had a good month. Boy, has he ever. Will Myers, too. Former Ray. Breaking ball in for a strike. Well, Kip got a hang at breaking ball, and he, it was a base hit. That, that had to be in there. I, he was going to try and throw that guy out, unless it, I don't know what it could have hit out there where if he didn't touch it. Longoria's out looking. He's belly aching. Yes, he is. Lance Barksdale says, don't go too far with that. Five strikeouts now for Kluver. Take another look here. Oh, it's right at the belt. Well, he might have been complaining that it was inside. You see how he pulls the hands in? That's what I'm guessing. It's not yeah. a bad pitch. And if you 
keep getting them, keep making them like that. Logan Morrison struck out, reached on a pass ball his first time up. Then he was caught stealing. And that wiped out what could have been an early run scoring chance for Tampa because Corey Dickerson got a base hit after that. Broke his bat. Napoli says I'll take it. Two down. All right, now we'll get another look at that hit by Kipnis and see if we can pick anything up on it. I don't know. Right off the glove. Right off the finger or the thumb or the glove. He was trying to charge that ball to get up as he jumped up and, and hit the glove and went by. I think he tried to charge it too quickly. That ball had some bounce to it. You know, normally they have their center fielder, Kiermeyer, who's on the DL. Plays a little bit deeper and he has a very good arm. Well, you think too, a ball that the ball that maybe has some backspin let's will check up. Let's let's watch the hop. See it? It oh. did touch his glove, yeah. definitely did. I mean, that was a long hop, and what he did, he didn't give him a, he wasn't going to throw the guy out anyway, and that's, he got himself in a, a really tough situation to catch the ball. Yeah, and then Kipnis must have hit, hit that with some top spin, because up. when it hit, it really yeah, it, took off. Yeah, it was off. a hanging breaking ball. I still think it's an inside the park. That's fine. Like, that's fine. <laughs> Go tell Kipnis. I'm that. not giving up. Gomes, can he get to it? He's to the fence. No, he ran out of room and almost ate a face full of chicken wire. That was about two feet from being, oh man, I'll say. He knew he had a chance, but that's why that padding's there. So two down, base is empty. 3 2 count on Jennings. Bluber has already fanned five. Oh my, that bat went in multiple pieces. Lindor throws him out, and the inning is over. One destroyed bat, couple of strikeouts. Bluber rolling along here tonight. He has fanned five, and the Indians lead it two to nothing.
That's that's his new uh, special. Looks like he's cut. got a helmet on. No, it does. Oh. How about our Lowe's home field advantage? Best home records in the bigs. KC, the Cubs, the Rangers, the Orioles, and now the Indians moving into that elite company. Well, let's see the first place teams there. Two of those teams are 20 plus games over 500 already. The Cubs are 47 and 21. Yeah, they're. The Texas Rangers are 46 and 25. You know, I, I want to go back, though, to something that I think, and maybe Andre can jump on here. I think Terry made the point to Andre when we were in Kansas City, which is a series that did not go well for the Indians. But at one point, I think on that road trip, he made the, the point that where the Indians were at was good, but it didn't, it couldn't be, it couldn't be a high watermark. It had to be a jumping off point. And... You know, you look at what the Indians have done since the, the rough series in Kansas City. They came home, took care of business, swept the White Sox. And now they're starting to build that momentum again. And, Andre, I think this is what Terry was saying. Don't be satisfied right. with just getting a few games over 500. Exactly what he said. Then I talked to Mike Napoli and Jabba Chamberlain, two of, you know, more veteran guys that have been there. And they said that's the one, that was the message that Terry wanted them to get out. Don't be happy because in the middle of June you're in first place. Make this the jumping off point where you become a better team. I think that was the word he uses. Make this a jumping off point where you become a better team, not the team that looks back and go, hey, we were pretty good in June. So that's mm -hmm. really what he wants this team to look at is, hey, it's nice where we're at right now, but this isn't, you know, what we what we went to spring training to look for. Now, I look at it, the, the, their jumping off point was the start of the last homestand. Then you went out on that road trip, and they had a, a pretty good road trip going, uh, what were they, uh, four and three or five and Four with the last three, even though they got beat, but they started to elevate their game, and now the same thing's going on. We got tonight, and tomorrow, we go on another yep. ten-game trip. Yep. So you got to go out and you got to continue to get better. Well, I think this team's starting to believe that it's not flukish where they're at. I think they're starting to believe that hey, you know what? We are pretty good because they've they've hung with the big boys. You know, they beat up Kansas City earlier, even though they got swept in KC. They've handled the the White Sox. They've handled the Tigers. They've taken care of their business in the division. And they played some of the other big boys well. So, yeah, I think they're starting to believe internally. And here's the and here's the thing. This isn't a but. This is an and. They're doing all this without their best player, and that's Michael Brantley. Is there any update, Andre, on Brantley? There's an update. and doesn't get much better. It says after continued discomfort, he was reexamined today. He received a quarter zone shot and is dealing with right biceps tendon tendonitis now. So he's dealing with tendonitis in the bicep. It just seems like that whole area has been an issue. No timetable has been given for him. But he's only played 11 games, I believe, if I'm thinking correctly. And to see this team where it's at, it's amazing. Well, to me, this team is saying, and, and you have to do this in sports. Look, he's around every day. They love him. They'd love to have him back. But if he's not, they got to play without him. Right. And they're doing a heck of a job. And you know what? You're not going to sit there and, and cry and wait for him to come back. They're going to do what they have to do and what they have done this year and that's get after it and do the best you can do however and Andre I know you have to work sort of in anonymity at times here so yes. no names please but ha have there been players have guys talked at all quietly privately about what they speculate this team might do as we get closer to the trading deadline absolutely there are guys in the clubhouse that have kind of looked around and they and I mean look baseball players are like the rest of us they look at the standings they know what guys are out there and who's out there and who can help and what they need so there's been some talk about that you talk about how they played against the big boys I think they made a big deal of how they played against the AL Central as well has played into where they're at you know that was one of the big things that they've they've dealt with and they've played pretty well against the Central so far but yes their eyes are wide open to what they can do Jose Ramirez cuts and misses two and two well as I said it's going to be interesting because with the additional wild card team more teams are in the mix for the trading deadline period. 
Well, it's always that way, though. I mean, but the one thing the players have to realize, sure, they want some help. They'd love to get help if you can. It's not up to them. they got to keep playing. Great That's base running up by play. Mike Napoli. Very heads-up play, man. He took off, and that ball didn't roll away from Conger very far, and he was off, and he went in standing up. Nice job. Watch his secondary lead. Shuffle, shuffle, get off. And, I mean, he didn't hesitate. That's not a guy blessed with great speed. They give him a stolen base. Okay. Unless that was a delayed steal. That I didn't think I he didn't took think off. So. Uh, I didn't Ramirez think out off. looking. Whatever. He's having a tough stretch right now. Ramirez, who's been one of the real pleasant offensive surprises this year, just four for his last 29 right now. Well, there's a good curveball. Locked him up. There's not much you can do about it. Take it, take the walk back. That's his second strikeout. And with one gone on a rebate to the plate, a rebate bounced into a fielder's choice his first time up. One ball, one strike. The Tigers and Mariners are scoreless in the fifth in Motown. It's a good pitching matchup. Justin Verlander, James Paxson. That was a wild one they had, extra innings. Bouncing between third and short. Cut off by Longoria. That boy Gate. And Aribe is out number two. Baseball returns Saturday on Fox with a game you'll only see on FS1 when the Padres take on the Reds at 3.30. Then it's Baseball Night in America with a battle between the Astros and the Royals at 7 on your local Fox station. Or you can watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Chisenhall takes a strike. Yeah, the Tigers went extra innings to beat Seattle last night, and the White Sox went extra innings to end their losing streak and beat the Red Sox in Fenway. It was Abreu who got a big hit off Craig Kimbrell to right center field in the 10th inning that gave Chicago the win. But how would you like that if you're Stephen Wright? The only run he gave up in the game was on a passed ball. And he ends yeah. up with a no decision because they couldn't score against Miguel Gonzalez. Yeah. Well, the Sox get uh, sailed three early in Fenway. They're up three to one in the fourth. Well, that's just how sometimes that's how it goes. Broken bat, base hit, left field. Coming around third, Napoli will try to score. Up with it is Moner. His throw is not in time. Safe at home as Napoli was able to slide under the tag of Hank Conger. Though we will wait and see if Kevin Cash no, may I, challenge this. Play. I had a great view. He didn't touch him. He slid to the inside. Conger missed the tag. That throw came down. It was hard. It looked like it beat him. In comes Napoli to the inside of the home plate or to the field side. And here comes the throw. Watch Napoli. He reads the catcher where he's going. He missed him. And he had the perfect angle. Barksdale was in good position. Look at it. Never touched him. Never touched him. A great slide there. Knapp ended up uh, manufacturing a run on his own with a big two out hit by Chisholm. Well, think about that. You always say be a good, aggressive base runner and be your own base coach. And that's exactly what Napoli did there. Yeah. Kevin Cash will, however, challenge the play. That's okay. He should. It's that close. They want to keep that third run off the board, and I don't blame him. But I'll tell you what, for Napoli, you get the base hit, you go to second, and then ends up getting a two out base hit, served by uh, Chisenhall, and a great slide at home plate. Kevin Cash, I guess, a 
rolling the dice here. And for, from his standpoint, this this might be worth a roll of the dice because it if is. it's three nothing, all of a sudden, bingo. You feel like this game might get With, away from you. You know, he knows Kluber's on the mound. He knows what he can do. He knows what his offense is doing. He wants to keep that run off the board. Even if he didn't touch him, he's going to say maybe there's an angle where he just maybe caught an arm or a jersey. Did the glove get him on the on the right thigh? Oh, I don't think so. I had a pretty good view from where I'm sitting, and he missed him. If anything, it would have had to be the arm for me. Because watch, he misses the thigh. Okay, misses the thigh. And it, and he it has the to be up here, right up yeah. uh, uh, on near the elbow if he touched him. And I, by that time, I think Napoli was at the plate. Watch, here comes the foot. He hasn't tagged him. There's the foot on the plate. I don't see anything there that would be enough to overturn that. Unless there's a different angle of a better well, look. Well, that's what I'm saying. If there's something that conclusively that points that he did touch him, which that would be awfully tough. But I agree, it's worth a gamble for him. Ted Barrett, the crew chief, is on your left. Home plate umpire Lance Barksdale, who made the call on your right. And they're just awaiting word from the replay command center in New York. And this is not an easy one for whoever's in the chair looking at that, trying to determine. Sit down, Napier. You did a good job that inning. Yeah, even if this call gets overturned, it's still great aggressive base running by Napoli in this inning. And we have a decision. Ted Barrett. Oh, call them out. I want to see the angle that they had. Yeah, I think they got him on the jersey. I got it. They must have gotten him just below the armpit on the jersey before the foot got the point, I guess. Oh, man. Okay. You buy Levin Furniture for the best deals on furniture and mattresses. Shop Levin's. Two to nothing, Cleveland on top. Instead of three to nothing, and the Indians still batting. Tampa's got to feel pretty good about themselves after that call gets overturned. Yes, indeed, they should feel great. Corey Dickerson has the only hit so far for Tampa in the game, and he'll lead off in the fifth. Out of play. his bat. Well, oh my goodness. How many bats has he shattered now? 
It's two in a row at, at least, and there might have been another one somewhere along the line here tonight. Well, you see, he gets way deep, and that was just above his thumbs, and the barrel of the head of that bat explodes. Ends up going st and sticks in the ground. Taylor Motter bounced into a fielder's choice. His first time up, grounds one to short. All right, here's the definitive replay look, Rick. And if you look closely, I'm not sure Napoli's foot ever touches the plate. It's close, it's around the plate. It is, I don't think it ever touched the plate. And I think that's okay. why they called him out. Okay. Because I think by the time he, he did get the tag on eventually, and Napoli's foot may have never actually touched wow. the plate. That's breaking it down right there. It's funny, too, how his foot was pointed. It was just going was the just direction weird, of the way that it? plate is angled. How strange was that? That's yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, it looked like to me on, on that one replay, his foot had the plate. I mean, he's sliding right at it. You kind of almost take for granted. Well, he slides to the inside on. part of it. So you yeah, think how, it had to it, touch it. How did it miss it, right? Well, missed it by that much. Hard hit ground ball. Kipnis is there. It's a six pitch inning for Corey Kluber. Middle of the fifth. Still 2 0 Cleveland. Parade will take place tomorrow right here in downtown Cleveland. And if you can't make it down for the parade, we'll have all the excitement of this historic event tomorrow morning, beginning at 11 a.m. on your home of the Cavs all season long. Fox Sports Ohio. Jan Gomes, first ball swinging, bloops one down the right field line. It's a fair ball. And it hops up into the crowd for a double. So Gomes two for two. And both balls yeah. hit to right field for him. The tide starting to turn for Gomes, man. If you think about how many times he hit ball line drives right into the glove and, it, you know, been taken from a few hits. 
Now he's starting to hit the ball to right field. I'll tell you what, they're starting to drop. The tide is changing for Jan Gomes. As this ball is going to run, he's going to run it out. It's going to hit line and deflect into the seats for a double. This is a thing of beauty. Boom. It's the track into the seats. Ground rule double. And yeah, Tyler Naquin, he laid out a sacrifice bunt his first time up. We'll do it again. Get that third run on the board if you can. Takes it's up and away ball one. You know, this is a point in time of the game. They almost had their third run last inning. It took a, a, an appeal to get it off the board. Get that third run on the board right now. Get them on, get them over, get them in in the middle part of the game after you take a lead. Beautiful, beautiful. Well done. Longoria's only played first. Let's go back and uh, listen in on Sandy Alomar. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, fair ball. There you go. He's telling him, get out of the box. Let's go. Start running. You never know if it's going to be fair. And it, it hit that uh, rubberized track and bounced into the seats. Well, an opportunity now. Infield in. Shot to third. Longoria has it. And he just stares Gomes down two away. Carlos Santana can't get him home from 30. Jumps on the first pitch. Yeah, he does that a lot with the runners ground. in scoring position. In game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers. This is the only runs of the game. Jason Kipnis with a knock to center. Desmond Jennings couldn't make the play. It goes to the wall. And Kipnis comes all the way around to score the second run. That was a two out base hit. So back to back nights, Kip has gotten a lefty with two outs to drive in a run. He lays off a tie ball one. Gave you those numbers a little while ago, the 69 games comparing the team from a year ago to this year. Last year they hit 224 with runners in scoring position. This year, 249. And on this homestand, they're ripping it up with runners in scoring position in two outs. They're two for two tonight. Seven for 19 on the homestand. Yeah, and it's the left-handers that have been able to get them. It was Chisholm up well. Yeah, Chisholm all got him. And, and Kipnis. Although Lonnie had the RBI wiped off the board, but he did get the hit. Yep. Three oh count for Jason Kipnis. And taking hits in for a strike. Mets lead the Kansas City Royals right now 2 nothing there in the fifth inning. Tigers Mariners still scoreless in the fifth. White Sox lead the Red Sox 3 1 at Fenway in the fifth. Kipnis fouls it off and a full kill. That game between the Royals and the Mets at City Field in New York. Payoff pitch. Up high, ball four. He walked him. And now Blake Snell will have to face Francisco Lindor with two on and two out. Well, that's the one the guy he wanted to go after. He fell behind Kip. Even though uh, Kip got a, a, a base hit his time before, he didn't want to face Lindor. This guy's good against left handed pitching. Got a base hit in his. Uh, no, he's 0 for 2 tonight. But he ripped the ball yeah. at first base his first time off. 
Last night he was three for four with a home run. Sometimes these are quote unquote grown men, but Blake Snell is just 23 years old. Yeah, 23. Think about it. I mean, had he gone to college, he'd be in his first year working in the real world. Upstairs, ball one to Francisco Lindor. at the center and Desmond Jennings will make the catch Indian strand a pair we've played five it's Cleveland two Tampa nothing Mobile greater coverage of baseball. The Dodgers back from the dead. They won four in a row. They're five and a half off the base in the NL West thanks to Justin Turner in an eight game hitting streak. Uh, he's been hot. Still, I doubt that San Francisco is just going to cough this thing up. Oh, that's too good be, a team. Yeah, they are. They're beating Pittsburgh pretty handily right now as we speak. I mean, Pittsburgh beat him last night They're somehow up. with Madison Bumgarner yeah, one on the hill. And 7 nothing Giants right now as we speak, fifth inning. Did I see or was I dreaming <laughs> that the Marlins hit eight solo home runs last night? I did not see any uh, work on that. I don't know if you were dreaming or not. Pitch up high. They were playing the Braves. Well, no, because they only scored uh, three runs okay. yesterday. Okay, I guess that one did then. And they weren't playing the Braves. Oh, yeah, they were. Oh, that's today. Oh, that's right. They were playing. Who are they playing? Like? Colorado. The Rockies. They were playing the Rockies. They got beat five to three. Active, uh, active dream imagination. Lonnie Chisinau makes the catch. 
All right, let's uh, listen in to Sandy Alomar mic'd up on that play at the plate that Kevin Cash challenged for Tampa. It's taking a long time. But you know, uh, it, it, it looked like his toe went around the plate. Like he went around like this. Yeah, it looked like, like See, I told you. Yep, they saw it. And that's what we saw, the toe oh. going around the plate. It was all solo home runs in the game. Oh, okay. Eight solo home runs there in you the have game. It. That's what it was last night. It's never happened before. How weird is that? Well, eight runs, eight solo home runs, five to three. It sounds like a pretty good game. <laughs> it had to be quick. There weren't any rallies. Ground ball to Kipnis, easy play on Logan Forsythe, two away. Yeah, that's, that's that is weird. weird. Yeah, it really is. Eight runs scored, all solo home. Not surprising that Colorado would be involved in a game like that. They can they can hit some home runs. Yes, they can. But that was in Miami, and that's not a. I don't think of that as being a home run haven. Yeah. That might have been Although flying maybe, into the Clevelander. Maybe they had the windows open and the wind was blowing <laughs> yeah, out or something. Who knows? Here's Brad Miller. 0 for 2. This guy generates some serious power. They said that home run he hit. 460. 461. You know, he has that leg kick, I think, more than. I didn't see that the last time we played them in April, but he's got a bigger leg kick, and he timed up one of uh, Tomlin's uh, curveballs last night, and it was right into his swing path. Watch the leg kick up front. And when you catch a ball like that, you can generate a lot of, of bat speed and power. And that's what the farthest home run hit by a Ray this year, and you wouldn't expect it coming from what, that was a pretty good pitch. Now, yesterday in Detroit, Miguel Cabrera hit one 461. That's a strike. Come on. Man. Well, that's, but I, that's what I thought. He hit a 461 foot home run last night, and they said, oh, Miller chased one down and in. He'll strike out. Gomes will throw to first. They said it hit above that concrete and the brick it. wall. Bounced and went out of the stadium. I saw it. It's out near the cars that they have <laughs> elevated. We'll show it when we get there. Bottom of the sixth inning. And it will be the four, five, and six hitters due up for Cleveland. Third straight time, Napoli's leading off. Swings at the first pitch and pops at the shallow left. And the shortstop Miller that's, goes out to get it. That's where the left fielder's got to take charge and call him off. Well, Motter's, I think Motter. 
he's more than more or less an infielder who's learning to play the outfield. Okay. I mean, he's a utility guy. That's up there long enough. Catch it. It's easier play for the outfielder than it is the infield. Well, we're seeing that more and more as we go around and we get to see teams, especially teams we don't know. A lot of guys playing out of position. Both going for versatility where, you know, they, they got to le learn how to play two, three, four positions. Bouncy ball and it's through the hole. So Jose Ramirez with a one out. You single. know that's interesting. Here's a team that doesn't play us a whole lot. Matt. They had three guys on the left side of the infield yeah. for Ramirez who hits the ball the other way a lot. That uh, surprises me right there. And that was just a nice routine run or so he needed it. And it was elevated and he gets a base hit one out single. I've never seen that for him. Interesting. Now they keep an eye on Ramirez, who's stolen seven out of ten on the year. But it's fouled back. He hasn't fouled too many back recently. He's been locked in, hitting it right on the nose. Runner goes and a chopper over the mound. Miller boots it. And everybody's safe. It was going to be a tough play for him anyway, but if he scoops it cleanly, he's going to get a right. rebound. That's true. Well, with Ramirez running, and he only had the one play, which was first base. Let's watch him. He gets a good break on it. He sort of laid back, but just couldn't feel the ball cleanly. Once he pushes it out of the glove, it remains first and second. See how they score it. Error. Second error of the night for Tampa. And now the Indians have two on one out. Lonnie Chisholm all to the plate. Chisholm a chance to do some damage. He had a base hit in the fourth and lost an RBI on a challenge by Kevin Cash that overturned the play on Mike Napoli, who slid in at home plate initially called safe. And down low. Look at 
Snell tonight. You can see the number he's wearing on his jersey, number four. First pitcher ever in Rays history to wear a single digit on the back of the uniform. The only other guy I can think of for the Indians was Jeff Judy. Number seven. Yeah. There's been a couple. Uh, let me think. Marcus Stroman with Toronto. Where's number six? Mike Leak for the Cardinals, number eight. 3 1 pitch. Lenny Chisholm over the rip to center field. Around third, Ramirez coming home. The throw cut off, and the Indians' lead is 3 to nothing. On Lonnie Chisenhall's 13th run batted in on the year. He makes good on it this time. No challenge, no replay. It's all good. Well, he hit that one right on the nose. That's a nice swing by Lonnie. And he knew he was going to get that fastball away. He gets it and he shoots it to left field. Let's watch Jennings come in. He didn't even take a crow hop or anything. He just got it in like he was an infielder getting rid of it quickly. Watch his footwork here. With two outs, you're, you're not going to get Ramirez anyway, I wouldn't think so. You just have to get the ball. He did. He just got it in as quickly as possible. But it's the big third run now for the Indians. And it keeps the inning going. First and second still. There you go. Second hit with a runner in scoring position. So all the lefties have done the damage with runners in scoring position. I get once. Chisholm all twice. Now, Jan Gomes has had himself quite an item. He blooped a single to right, and he blooped one right down the line. On the chalk for a double his last time up. And Leon Gomes has a no! This one's caught in a double play. And that's going to end the inning. Almost had his third hit of the night. Instead, it's an inning ending double play. The Indians do get a run, and after six, lead it three to nothing. Lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud partner of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1 800 Elk Ohio. Buy Ford, built Ford tough. And buy Subway. Fresh is what we do.
A beautiful night in downtown Cleveland where the Indians have a three to nothing lead now. On the Tampa Bay Rays. Corey Clover just allowing just one hit. It was a two out single in the second inning. Goria grounded the short his first time up struck out in the fourth inning. Pops this one up. Lonnie Chisholm on right field. Makes the catch one away. Well Corey Kluber six strikeouts has walked just one but he has been in command. He's thrown the ball very well. Good cutters. You know he's had eight outs on three pitches or less. Last two innings, 16 pitches, 13 strikes coming into this one, and he saw it off. He's got a lot of firewood in that opposing dugout. <laughs> so he is in command. 77 pitches to this point. Logan Morrison. With one out and the base is empty here in the seventh inning. See, that's the chance you take when Kluber's throwing like he is tonight. If you get aggressive and you you have a quick inning, like a six-pitch inning, I think they had back in the fifth. That's what happens, you know. But if you sit and wait, he can pile up the punch outs because when he he gets ahead of you, he, he's not going to walk you. There's a good chance he can strike you out. Swung out and missed in the count one and two. Well, it just stands to reason, Rick, if you're facing a guy like a Corey Kluber, or in this day and age in Major League Baseball, there's so many guys with, with just power arms. Why would you want to take a first pitch strike if it's, if it's in the hitting zone and, well, and let them get you, to their secondary stuff? Only if you can't see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean. Unless you've never faced a guy that a guy's patient, you want to see where arm slot is, and I can understand some of that. But. You know, these guys, they don't really have a history on Kluber. It's only his uh, seventh start against him. And a foul back. See, and when you get a fastball from Kluber like that, you better put it in play because he's gonna, he should get a pitch to hit. I mean, he, he makes mistakes with his fastball and gets a pretty good portion of the plate sometimes, but you can't foul it off. But then again, I guess you could say that with a lot of the pitchers that have the stuff that Kluber has. He chases one in the dirt. And Gomes will throw him out. Seven strikeouts for Corey Kluber. We're swinging into summer here tomorrow when the tribe wraps up the homestand against Tampa Bay. Alan Jensen start our coverage with Indians live at 630 followed by the first pitch at 7 on Sports Time Ohio or streaming live on Fox Sports Go swing into summer presented by Miller Lite. Two down for Desmond Jennings. The knees, it's 0 and 2. Jennings almost chased after, but he did not go. Yeah, that was yeah. He was throwing the bait out there. He didn't go fishing. Good slider coming out of the strike zone. He wanted to get him to chase that pitch. He would not. And a 
foul right back. After all that, Desmond Jennings works a two out walk. Okay, I want to remind everybody let's celebrate the Cavaliers NBA championship and the team's parade tomorrow while the Indians are going along all in 2 1 6 with a $16 ticket offer for the last game against the Rays. That'll start tomorrow at 7 10. All upper deck tickets. $16 when purchased at Indians.com or you can. Do it at the ticket office right here at the ballpark. Tomorrow night, $16. Come on out. See if the tribe can stay undefeated on this homestand before we hit the road for 10. That walk snapped a string of 13 in a row, retired by Corey Kluber. And he had him down 0-2. Just couldn't get him to chase his pitch. Corey Dickerson still has the only hit of the game for Tampa. With a two out single in the second inning. Well, three and one against Tampa this year. The Indian starters have done a number on that offense. They really have. And you can keep this team if they score, just give up the one. Don't let them get uh, double digits. Coming into tonight, they had shut them out in 29 out of 35 innings. We'll add six more to it. So it's 35 out of 41. But they have shut the offense down. In the game that they, they beat the Indians, it was Kluber on the mound because the Indians only scored one. It's a pitching staff that can do that. I mean, if they if they get on a roll, they're a lot like a, a team offensively. They yeah. get hot. They can just. Well, we've witnessed it. That they've been on a, a, a great roll. Now the one-two. Struck him out looking. Strikeout number eight for Corey Kluber. Seven shutout frames. The former Cy Young winner.
Indians on top three to nothing. Tyler Naquin, Carlos Santana, Jason Kipnis is due up for Cleveland. Blake Snell, the young left-hander, he's done a nice job tonight. Indians have touched him for three runs on seven hits. But for a 23-year-old, this uh, this rookie has definitely shown some promise, I think, from what we've seen tonight. He's got a good arm, good fastball. He's got a curveball. It's a matter, uh, he's been behind a number of hitters. It's just a matter of repeating that delivery and seeing, you know, he'll learn to pitch from in front. The left-handers have done a nice job. Chislaw with two hits, Kipnis with one. They've, they're the ones that have been able to drive in the runs, you know, with two outs. And this guy has set up the innings. He's had a couple of sacrifices, so he gets a chance to swing now. I mean, when you're going out there and pitching, I don't care who you are. When your team only has one hit on the board, it do, yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't help. It doesn't matter. <laughs> There's not, yeah. And Naquin taking well, all and the by way. rights, it should be a two nothing game because the way Jennings played that one ball into the inside the park. Could very easily also be a four nothing game, if not for a heads yeah, up challenge by right. Tampa. That's true too. Ball four. The Indians have their leadoff man aboard. Once again, let's listen in to Sandy Alomar mic'd up. Oh, oh yeah, he gone. There you go. Hey, Gomer. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, fair ball. There you go. Well, thanks to Sandy Alomar for wearing a mic tonight during the ball game. And Carlos Santana, overly aggressive all night long. You know, you, you think back to. I mean, shoot, when you were a kid, NFL players were wearing mics for NFL films back in the 60s. You know, Bill Saul was a linebacker, was one of the first guys to ever wear a mic. And over the years, they've captured some <laughs> amazing, in the moment, clips of just mass humanity crashing into each other. Yeah, some that. colorful language along the way. I just think, you know, you might not. Hear something that's earth shattering, but I think it, it takes the fans to a place that they would never ever go without that little piece of sound there. But baseball's obviously a lot different than football in the fact that it's one game every week for 16 weeks, whereas baseball's an everyday grind. So the the emotions, the intensity. It's not at the same level it, on, on a baseball field as you would have during a regular season NFL game. But you, you could definitely pick up some some interesting sound bites. Well, you know, everybody uh, always wonders what, what maybe a pitching coach is saying to his pitcher. You know, they may not let that over the air or whatever. But a lot of times it's it's nothing earth shattering. Exactly. You know, it's just something like, hey, let's lighten the, the situation here. Hey, there's enough people could be screaming. They could be yelling. And it's like. Hey, you know what? You better start throwing strikes or you will not be out here. Much I'm, I'm glad you actually brought that up because uh, it was really interesting last night in that game between Boston and Chicago. Santana down on strikes. Zach Duke, yeah, comes into the ball game. Bases loaded, nobody out. And Robin Ventura was asked afterward, what did you say to him? I said, Good luck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's I mean not, that was really right. cool. I don't know what else I can really say to good luck. You know, what am I going to tell him? And he got out of it. Yeah. He struck out uh, Pedroia. I think he got a pop up, and that was it. He got out of the inning. Yeah. And the Red Sox, or the White Sox, went on to win it um, in the 10th inning. Yeah, a lot of times people think there's so, so much strategy and everything being talked about. No. Most of the time, it's just like, hey, look. This is what you have to do there. And then it's sort of like lightning a, a, a situation. 
you know what else he did last night? He brought Tyler Saladino into the infield again. Again, he did went he? To the five infield. It worked here yep. <laughs> for him. Yep. One zero pitch. Down. You know, as much dirt. time as uh, you know, players and uh, coaches and managers they spend together, and you're doing things day after day after day after day. Any constructive thing is talked about before you even step on the field. You know what I mean? They're here so many hours a day, and, and if you have situations you want to talk about something where they come out and get their early work done, that's when it's all done right there. Now during the game, it's just reminders, mm -hmm. man. That's muscle memory. It's instinct. It's, uh, you know, it's a feel thing that you have to go out and do stuff. It's not like you're looking over your play card trying to figure right. out what play to run. You, you, you don't have it. You do it every instincts. single day. It's instincts. Yeah. The players on the field, they know what they're going to do in most situations unless the manager wants something specific hey right here let's run the wheel play or let's most of the time you know. it's free wheel let's go you guys are the athletes you go out and make the plays you execute and you win runner goes pitches up high and conger couldn't get a grip on the ball that's why you got to apply the pressure well, I that's tell a you tough what, time snell maybe inadvertently gave him a perfect pitch to throw the runner out on. Well, he had a little slide step. Conger has issues throwing the baseball from behind the plate. He always has when he was with the Angels, and I witnessed him look. He's afraid to throw it sometimes. And the transfer, he couldn't get it cleanly. So you, even though he didn't get a good jump, he steals it easily without a throw. Snell at the 100 pitch mark. And Kitten swings through at full count. Jason, one of three left-handed hitters in the lineup tonight for the Indians. Lonnie Chisinau has two hits and an RBI. Naquin, two sack bunts, a walk, and now a stolen base. Kipnis, a base hit, an RBI, a run scored. Walked his last time up. Now the 3 2 pitch. Popped him up, foul, and out of play. Is going. And that's that's the first uh, that three two pitch that break up ball was the last one. The first one down in the zone. Everything else been upstairs. To left field near the line. Motter on the run can't get there and it's foul. Yeah, just a bit foul. Had a good look at it. But as it tails away, you can see lands in foul territory, and that fan gets it on a one hopper. He realizes how close it is. Have to go and try one more time. Could very well be the last hitter of the night before Blake Snell. Two pitch is a bouncing ball to second base. Forsythe throws him out, but Kipnis does his job. He gets Naquin over to third base, and with one out. Oh, excuse me, I beg your pardon. There are now two down. We got uh, Santana. Kevin Cash going to make the pitching change. I had a feeling that would be the last hitter for Snell, and indeed it is. So the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made. Kevin Cash. Snell goes six and two thirds. He lost three runs. He is responsible for that runner at third base. He's going lefty for a lefty, and we'll be right back.
It's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Back to the third inning, Jason Kitten has got a breaking ball, smoked it to center, and on the big hop, it got by Jennings. So Kipnis gets an RBI as Jan Gomes scored, and then Kip kept going all the way around, and he would score. Yeah, a lonely feeling when you're an outfielder. You let a ball get by you like that, you've got to run all the way back to the wall to get it. Emmy Romero, left-hander, new pitcher. And a first pitch strike to Francisco Lindor. Well, in his 25 games, he's pitched 24 innings, but 14 walks, so he seems like he could be a little wild. Popped him up. Should get him out of the inning. Whoa, almost a circus play there. Decker holds on, inning over. Seven complete, it's Cleveland three, Tampa nothing. and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Corey Kluber has been spectacular here tonight. He has allowed one hit in seven innings of work. He has struck out eight and he has walked two. Bottom third of the Rays order to up Taylor Motter, Jeff Decker, and Conger. Kluber still south of 100 pitches on the night. And it's up high ball one. Motter 0 for 2. You know, I, I, I was thinking to myself before this game started, I wondered how the matchup would play out because there have been times when we've seen Kluber get knocked around a little bit by teams who are aggressive yeah. because he throws so many strikes. And knowing that that's sort of the aggressive nature of this Tampa offense, I wondered how that would match up tonight. You it know, has, I think it has been a mismatch. I think teams in our division get aggressive off Corey. A lot of times because they know, you know, the stuff he has. Just like I said, he doesn't face this team a whole lot. It's his second start against him this year and only his seventh in his career. So they don't have a, a good track record on him when you only face a guy maybe twice a year. Beats it into the ground. Juan Arebe has a routine play and another perfect throw, one down. Hey, the champion Cavs victory parade will take place tomorrow right here in downtown Cleveland. All the excitement of this historic event. If you can't be here, we'll have it for you. 11 a.m. on your home of the Cavs, Fox Sports Ohio. And I know they're expecting a million people or so in downtown Cleveland for this historic event tomorrow. But if you can't be one of them, just flip on the tube and you'll see all the coverage.
Ohio State marching band will be part of the parade tomorrow. In addition to all sorts of floats and various dignitaries and of course the Cavaliers players themselves. Bouncer first base Napoli takes it himself. I was thinking to myself that on this uh, next road trip we will head uh, to Detroit for a series that begins on Friday night and the last time we were in Detroit was when the Cavaliers were just starting their right. historic playoff run That's against the right. Detroit Pistons. We were staying at the same hotel as the Cavaliers. We saw a lot of the guys and we haven't been back to Detroit since. That's true. Where the playoffs started for them. And the playoffs just was until the finals, the playoffs were sort of a breeze. Well, there was they, a, they had a little hiccup there. There's a lot of games. Uh, Toronto, Toronto. But, yeah. But, but you know, there was a lot of games in, throughout the playoffs this year that 20 or more points. A lot of blows. Different. So, I mean. Yeah. And you would think, okay, their playoff team is not going to get that way, but boy, this year it seems like there were more than than ever. Poor Hank Conger's I'll bat just got destroyed. I'll tell you what, Corey Kluber has provided somebody with a lot of firewood tonight. I think the Rays are going to send Kluber an invoice for a new well, batch they, of bats. Well, Willie's already on the phone to Louisville. <laughs> uh, they're going to be shipped to wherever their next. It's in Baltimore. Hey, can you get us about three extra dozen down there? And these are, we're not talking about just the you, the crack. You hear it, you know it's broken. Shatter. These bats have exploded. Yeah, tonight. they really have. Now the 0-2 pitch. Corey <laughs> saw Mill Kluber. Now the one two swung out and missed got him to chase one in the dirt inning over mismatch tonight Kluber has struck out nine Tampa hitters in eight one hit shutout innings of baseball. After any Romero, he's just one batter to end the seventh inning. 
He also was called back uh, last Friday for a second stint with Tampa this year. He's 15 home runs since the start of last season allowed. It's time for second among American League relievers. Seven of his 14 hits allowed this year have been home runs. Well, another broken bat. This one's a base hit, though, for Cleveland. As Napoli has his second hit of the night. How about that? That's the fourth straight time tonight that Napoli has let off an inning. And he's two for three. He may end up leading him off tomorrow. Talk to Tito. But he's on base for the third time tonight. Jose Ramirez had a base hit his last time up. That was batting right handed. Up and away. Party at Napoli's shirts made their debut tonight. Oh yeah, yeah. I think they're in the team shops now. All the players were sporting them before the ball game during batting practice. It's become sort of a catchphrase. Party at Napoli's. <laughs> mm. Doesn't have an address on it, does it? Runner goes and Ramirez hammers one deep right field. Decker back. The Souvenir City. They homer again. And the Indians may have just delivered an absolute knockout punch to make it 5 0. Well, you said he uh, gives up the home runs. That keeps their string going, too, doesn't it? Yeah. And he hit that ball right on the nose. That's the eighth home run you're allowed by Gelt. That one gets out of here, makes it a 5 0 ball game. For Ramirez, is fourth. Up and away to Juan Arribe. The ninth straight game the Indians have hit a home run in. Uh oh. And now a rebate 
Jacks one deep left inside the pole. Go into the home run porch. That's four in a row for him. How do you like me now? <laughs> First time in his career, Juan Arriba is homered in four straight games. He He's to, saving the best for last. He wanted to stay at home plate, make sure that ball didn't hook foul, but he got a hanger and uh, he pulled it down the line. Four straight for him. When we said that nine straight, I was thinking, well, this guy's done it three in a row for his own self. Now make it four. Wow, the first three hitters, Gelt's faces, single and two dingers. There's Big Poppy and there's Little Poppy <laughs> cheering him on. Well, I mean, that, that, I just, you just shake your head. Steve Gelt, I mentioned it when he came into the game. He's now given up 15, 16, 17 hits and nine home runs on those 17 yeah. hits. Yeah. You better get the ball down or get it out of the middle of the plate then. They scored three runs in uh, the eighth inning of last night's game. And they come right back and do the same thing again tonight. Lonnie Chisholm scorches one to second, caught by Forsythe, one down. Yeah, Tom Boshenik made up a card for us before the game started. During, during the Indians' nine game home win streak from the seventh inning on, not only have they outscored the opposition now 21 to 4, but coming into tonight, the batting average, the Indians from the seventh inning on in the nine game home win streak have hit 371. Their, their opposition is batted 187. Yeah, there's that feeling, man, late in the game. It wasn't here earlier in the year, but it is now. Believe me, from the seventh inning on early, they, they struck to do anything. But boy, they're on a roll right now, especially at home. And a lot of rebate is locked in. Boy, Andre's going to have his choice to talk to some people tonight, huh? Foul right back. You got to go back to Kip's rookie year. When he hit all those home runs starting here and then he went to Fenway for three straight to hit four in a row. Yeah. Uh, which is what a rebase. Does. Okay. Kip, this is calling. We need more beer for the party at Naps. Six runs now on ten hits. As Gomes swings through it and strikes out two down. Tampa has been blanked on one hit by Kluber. It's going to bring up Tyler Naquin. He's put down a couple of sacrifice bunts. He has walked and stolen a base. Doesn't have a. And at bat tonight in three plate appearances. No, but he's got a dirty uniform. That's all that matters. Well, he stole a base. And on top of that, you know, it's been pretty quiet tonight. You think about there's only been, let me see, Rick. I got one, two. Three, four balls hit to the outfield. Yeah, they've pretty much had the night off. Yes, not including the single by Dickerson. Yeah, so five total. You know that happens sometimes. That's, that's you don't mind. You enjoy watching a man work very well at his craft on the hill. He gets the best seat because he's right behind him. 
Kind of like what the uh, Giants are watching tonight. Johnny Cueto, a three hit shutout over the Pirates. There San Francisco yeah. pummeling them 10 to nothing. White Sox lead the Red Sox 3 1 in Fenway. They're in the eighth inning. Detroit leads Seattle 3 2 in the eighth at Comerica. 2 and 2 the count on Naquin. Mets 2 1 over Kansas City. Bottom of the seventh at City Field in New York. We're going to miss the inning is over but the Indians break it open with the long ball here in the eighth. Jose Ramirez with a two run shot and Juan Arribe is homered in four straight games. for his second complete game in three starts. Boy, he's been great tonight. A one hitter as we welcome you over here to the corner. Jensen Lewis, Al Pulowski. Jensen, tonight, Corey Kluber, he's been outstanding. Well, I said a parade of sliders. <laughs> We've seen a lot of free air conditioning tonight, but what can you say? He gave up the hit in the second inning, and after that, it's been absolute domination. For the call of the ninth, upstairs we go to Matt and Rick. Don't forget to join us for Indians Live, brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care right after this one. Fellas? Absolute domination indeed. That's what we have seen from Corey Kluber. Thanks, Al and Jensen. I mean, he has just been phenomenal with nine strikeouts. This has been the Cy Young Award version of Corey Kluber that we witnessed a couple of years ago. I mean, he just he dominated teams start to start. Well, it's uh, going through his fourth time through the lineup. Now the first time he threw 37 pitches, second 32, third 36. Clean it up, Corey. Come on. Well, I mean, how much more consistent can you get? <laughs> how about that fifth inning when he retired the side on six pitches? Yeah. Well, you got to have a couple of those innings if you want to complete a game nowadays, it seems like. He's had 10 uh, outs on three pitches or less again. Like, you know, he can he can do so often. And that's when you get those eight, nine, ten strikeouts. You need a couple of innings like that if you want to finish it. Drive right into the glove of Lindor. One away. <laughs> Defensively now for the Indians, Jose Ramirez has taken over at third base. And Michael Martinez has gone into the game in left field. Miller with a ground ball up the middle and it's through. That's just the second hit of the night. And Brad Miller one for Double. four tonight, two for eight in the series. And then it will bring up Evan Longoria. There is action in the clock try bullpen. 
Gorzolani, the left hander, Zach McAllister, the right hander. Kluber's at 110 pitches, but again, this is one of those nights where he he's been pretty much stress free all night long. Indians scored in the third. They've never trailed. Line drive base hit by Longoria. And so Tampa now has two on with one out. And Terry Francona pacing in the dugout, wondering as he talks to Mickey Calloway, should we? Go to the bullpen now. Give him one more hitter. Well, this one just out of reach. He went right back up the middle. Kipnis got there. He didn't hit it off the sweet spot of the bat. That's for sure. He just misses it. So back-to-back -back singles. They now have three hits. He can, maybe he can end it in style and get a ground ball double play. Swung out and missed. Logan Morrison, 0 for 3. On the line. Some of the fly ball to center field. And Tyler Naquin will make the catch. Two down. Desmond Jennings will be the batter. And Jennings tonight is 0 for 2 with a walk. Didn't hear the attendance. It looks like we got more than we had last night. 13,000. 811 last night. But folks have enjoyed another gorgeous night at the ballpark. Seems like the breeze has picked up it has. the last half yeah, minute. It really, no, it's been picked up for about the last two innings. It's starting to pick up. And there are so bugs, too, flying around the lights. Oh, nice pitch by Kluber. Something off, dropped it in for a strike, gets a hit. Fifteen thousand six hundred and twenty nine, the official attendance. Again, hope to have you down here tomorrow night. The Indians will wrap up the homestand and head out for a ten game road trip. Teams playing great baseball, first place in the division. The 0 1 pitch. Bouncing ball towards short. Lindor goes to first. And the Indians win again. Ten in a row at home. Ten games over 500. They won five in a row overall. And Corey Kluber with a three hit shutout. Blanks the Tampa Bay Rays as the Indians win it going away by a final score of six to nothing. Chance to sweep the Rays tomorrow as the Indians will remain in first place regardless of what happens to Kansas City though at last check the Royals were losing in the seventh or eighth inning in New York. So should the Mets go on to win the Indians could have themselves a two game lead in the AL Central. But a great pitch ball game by Corey Kluber. And the offense, once again, Rick, this uh, this offense, it scores late. Even when yeah, even when it doesn't score at all, it finds a way to score late. It's tonight, nice. you know, they got a couple runs early, blew it open late. Yeah, it's nice to see, boy. They're getting that confidence where they feel like, okay, it's time. We got to add on or we got to come back. And they've been able to do it. So a few extra never hurts. Six to nothing is the final tonight. We'll have some final thoughts from Progressive Field right after this.